Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for joining me once again. You are always most welcome. Well, I've had quite a bit of a break recently, as some, several of you have noticed, probably wondering where on earth I've got to. Have I died? Have I run away from the tax authorities or whatever? <laughs> In fact, um, as you know, last month, September 2022, I, I got Covid. Uh, and we actually had a holiday booked. This is exactly when I was going to go on holiday. So the holiday had to be postponed. So the, re the main reason I've been away is I've been, uh, yeah, having a little bit of a break. Got a new job as well. And uh, in the last couple of weeks we had this uh, break which was planned and postponed. So sorry for my absence. However, that said, it's been the 50th anniversary year of the Matchbox model kit company, or Lesney company. Uh, producing those kits anyway since 72 and um, I think that uh, I, I will be doing a bit less on YouTube in fairness because I don't quite have the time I used to have and we are coming to the end of this 50 years of Matchbox so uh, I know several of you um, have already generously um, lent me gifts, donated kits, so everybody's been very helpful and very very uh, very very uh, positive to the channel um, it's impossible for me to review them all, I'm afraid. I'm getting offers now from all over the place of all sorts of things, and I just don't have the time, in truth. <clears throat> so, I will be doing a bit less on YouTube. I'm going to try and make what I do uh, less, qu less quantity and a bit more quality, if possible. So, um, perhaps once a week would be probably a stretch uh, in future. You'll probably get one video a week. I mean, in August, I was looking at the analytics on YouTube, and in August, I did 21 videos, which is a record for me. And that's almost double what I normally, even this year, have been producing. So, uh, as they say in that famous chocolate advert, uh, where the lady, a very beautiful lady, dressed in like a strapless dress at the ambassador's um, ball, she says to the ambassador, or Mr. Ambassador, you have been spoiling us with these chocolates. Well, I've been spoiling you with these videos of Matchbox. So yeah, I, I, I can't quite keep up that pace. Um, uh, as, as I say, I don't really have the time. So, we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about this book which has just come out, which I think several of you will find interesting. It's a strange one actually. Um, it, basically it's obviously about the Tamiya Lockheed P-38 Lightning and how to build it. And there's some amendments in there, including the new, it's been updated basically. We've had to wait for this book. It's been on order for, oh, I think we've had it on order for about five or six months at least. Uh, and it's just suddenly popped up last week, came out in the post, I've almost forgotten about it, yeah. But well worth a look. A real uh, excellent uh, piece of media to support your model building. Uh, and of course we've got Marcus Nichols, Brett Green and Spencer Pollard. You couldn't have three better sort of uh, teachers uh, to, to show us how to get the most out of our P-38 Lightnings. Now I've also got the P-38 Lightning white box kit, some of which we might take a look at. I, I did a review of the, I sort of did a review, did I, of the original version? And I sort of skimped over this because um, only certain parts were different, of course, uh, going from the... Uh, the FG model to the H model. I'm right, aren't I? Yes, the H. Um, so I didn't really go into any detail. I just showed you the few the add-ons I've got. So I might go into a little bit more detail. But I don't want to make this long video because I know that um, some people. I've had the only criticisms I've had recently really have been people say, "Oh, video's too long." Well, those people that are criticised are not the regular viewers, and they're not. I don't think people that. I think the people that just like a quick hit, you know, on YouTube, and uh, and I don't really do that. So. I make no apologies really, I think I'd rather do a quality in-depth video less often than do bite-sized videos every day or whatever, I'm not into that, you know. And we've also had issues with YouTube themselves, with the uploads. Um, slight problem where some of the upload time is very strange, taking longer than usual. But I've got a new Mac now, so really, it's not, it's not at my end, I can assure you. The problem is at their end, and uh, and then they upload the video, and it's not in full HD definition, which is really bad. And of course, we had this with the um, Zuki Mura BF109, which is a fantastic kit, and I think it's quite a good review. But the original, I actually got it out first in the UK, I think. But the first night we had the premiere, it was in low definition, and there's no reason for it being uploaded like six hours prior to the broadcast time, and it should have been lots and lots of times. So. It's getting very difficult actually to upload longer videos, so I'm going to try and keep them a bit shorter, maybe half an hour. Um, 
uh, or thereabouts, depending on the nature of the subject. Really. So we're going to talk about this today, and then we're going to have um, probably next week. We're going to have <coughs> something I've been meaning to get round to do for ages, which will really, I think, make some of you smile and maybe blush with embarrassment. Uh, no, it's nothing naughty. It's about your stash. We're going to talk about how stupid is your stash. Mine's pretty stupid, but there are more stupid ones around in terms of size in particular, quantity and uh, amount of money tied up and etc. And I think it's quite amusing because you know, people talk about the stash all the time and some people suddenly have a meltdown and I think it comes to all of us in the end. I'm sure it happened to me where you think, this is ridiculous, I've got thousands of pounds here and you, you want to sell them off, you know. Um, obviously in my case it's matchbox. Anyway, we'll talk about that in the video. I don't want to preempt it too much, but I think the modelers amongst you who are, have a stash will find it quite interesting and probably quite amusing. But let's get into this. So, I'm going to zoom you in, have a little closer look at this excellent book, which is up from the How to, how to Build range. Um, I'll just pop the model aside for a second. I think we'll go in the book first. Now this, if ever there was a book review that really merited a good look, this is it. It's beautiful, very picture heavy and some wonderful examples of model building and painting within. So without further ado, I'll just crack on. Excuse me. <clears throat> I'll just crack on and we'll get into it. So, first of all, we've got Marcus Nichols, Brett Green and Spencer Pollard. And we've got a photo of them all here, so the usual suspects. <laughs> uh, they do a lot of these uh, how to build Tamiya. Uh, books. I'm doing them justice, perhaps I'll show you like that and then like that. You see Brett and Spencer. So um, Marcus is a fantastic, particularly painter. He's absolutely stunning and painting and weathering. A genius, frankly. Brett Green, well he needs no introduction. Uh, I must just tell a funny story here, uh, which will amuse many of you. In the uh, on the YouTube channel, um, uh, I forgot what it's called now, Brett Green's channel, um, Scale Aviation Works, anyway, I've forgotten. But um, when this kit came out a couple of years ago, uh, he built this and he, he put one of these on, it's very similar, I think, to maybe the one that's on the front, I think it is. And it was just like jaw dropping, so good, you know, on every level. And I was like, uh, 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 I was almost lost for words. And it was only later I discovered that Brett had built the model, but he didn't paint it, Marcus painted it. So there's a bit of a, a, a joke, a chuckle going around in modelling circles saying, uh, uh, even Phil Flory got into this as well. See, he was, uh, I think I told him on a live chat, and he was saying, is that right? Yeah? Yes. <laughs> and uh, the joke was, you know, oh, I'll, I'll just get... Marcus Nichols to paint it. I'll just build them. I'll get Marcus Nichols to paint them and weather them and then we'll have a perfect result. Because uh, Brett had put this uh, video on and it gave the impression, and it, it visually gave the impression that it, it was his, all his work. And he's a brilliant modeler, please, if Brett's watching, don't be offended. Uh, it was just this sort of uh, finding out later, hang on a minute, he didn't paint it. <laughs> um, I, I need that. I need someone who's going to paint my kids. I would love to be able to just make them. I'd make a lot more, a lot more. I'm not, I mean, I'm not making many at all at the moment. I've had this problem with my arm and I've got right shoulder trouble. Bit of an excuse, I know. And then I got COVID and then some of mojo went off and all that stuff. A lot of you know what I'm talking about. Um, sometimes you just don't feel like modelling. We're now into the season, for me anyway, here in the UK, where, yes, it is definitely much more interesting. And I've started back working back on my Porsche 917 from the Le Mans movie, Steve McQueen. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm definitely getting back into it, but I could have. I've done a very poor, very poor this year. It's probably my worst year actually since I, since I went back into modelling in about 2008 and got really seriously back into it. This has got to be my worst year for output. So I haven't I haven't completed a single model yet. I completed one on New Year's Eve last Christmas. Um, nothing since. Uh, I've tinkered around with this Harrier, which I haven't really started properly. And I have, but I have done quite a lot of work on this Porsche and it really needs to finish it, so that's where I'm heading with that. Anyway, digressing. So, that was the joke. Yeah, I'll just build it and I'll just send it, pack it up and send it to Marcus Nichols and he'll do a, he'll do a world championship winning model finish and weathering and I'll win lots of awards with it. Just don't tell anybody that Marcus painted it. <laughs> Sorry, Brett. Anyway, let's get on. I'll zoom you in. No more of my taking the mickey out of other modellers. 
Not very nice, is it? Especially now I haven't done anything at all. Anyway, here we go. But look, you see the work, standard of work that we're talking about. Uh, and then we start off. By the way, this is obviously from uh, Doolittle Media. Um, it's retailing at, I think it was around about 20 20 pounds doesn't seem to say on it about 20 pounds thereabouts in the UK I think you find it is um, but it's not like a magazine this is a proper bespoke book you know starts off with a full history uh, of the P38's development uh, what the uh, designation for it was then we get the images of the original FX kit the F and G model with some really nice sprue shots I'm just going to turn my light round there we go. Nice sprue shots. And then goes on. More detail on the sprues. <clears throat> and it talks about the ball bearing weights. This is a really outstandingly engineered kit, it has to be said. But everyone, I've not built it, but I know it's going to be perfect. Everyone that's built it has said, wow, it's one of the, one of the best of all time in terms of the way it goes together, and it's just beautifully engineered. Um, even shows some of the, um, the CAD work, which you don't normally see from Tanya. Uh, some of the behind the scenes design work there. Uh, and there you've got a lot of detail showing the uh, canopy in the cockpit. And then the finished item. Uh, and that, that bottom one is actually from the photos from Tamiya themselves. They have a habit of showing a, uh, a finished model in a very mint, you know, rolling out of the factory condition, whatever it is, whether it's a tank. And I think on tanks it, it looks particularly weird actually, but yeah, uh, it's just be aware. They don't do weathering at all, it's not really their thing, but that's fair enough. And then we've got um, the P38 Lightning at War. We've got lots of examples here of some very famous uh, aces um, who've flown the aircraft. A lot of these are in the Far East, it has to be said. Um, Richard Bong, I think he was, was he the most famous of all? I think he was, wasn't he? Was he the top scorer of all time? Uh, certainly in the American US, uh, American military, uh, American flyers, Richard Bong. Um, and yeah, well, you've got some really, really good reference photographs here. Showing you all those great scenes from in-theatre operations. And then we go on. I'll, I'll try and speed this up because otherwise I'll just start looking at it and, and we'll get lost, you know. <laughs> but you need to get the book. You really need to get the book. There's Pudgy, that's of course, that was a famous one, wasn't it? Because um, this is the one that was the basis for the Matchbox kit. Uh, Pudgy, yeah, Pudgy was one marking up. It's one of the marking options in the P38J kit. That's the new kit, so bear that in mind. If you want Pudgy, you need to get the J version. And then there's lots of pictures of them building the, the CBs, building their um, uh, temporary uh, landing area off the docks in this case actually. Uh, and they built all these uh, temporary landing strips with uh, metal sheeting. Um, and then we get into the actual... Yeah, then we get into the actual kits themselves, one by one. So this starts with the the G, which is the Miss Virginia at Guadalcanal. This, of course, is the famous aircraft. Look at the beautiful finish on this. This is the aircraft that shot up and uh, destroyed General uh, Admiral, sorry, Yamamoto's uh, Betty Bomber um, over Rabaul. And it's basically giving you all the hints and tips of what to use, how to get really nice finishes in the cockpit. Um, I mean, look at the detail here. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? Undercarriage bays, building it up, putting in your, these weights that are provided to make sure it's uh, it sits on its nose, doesn't become a tail sitter. Lots of interior. They've even got masking sets here. Uh, Trinity Splatter airbrush templates from Ushi van der Rosten are being used there to give this like a spattered effect. Can be can look really good, especially as a um, as a pre-shade. <coughs> then we've got also pre-shading being done with lots of masking tape on the joins of the panel lines. Loads and loads of tips and hints in here, I've got to say. Then they're talking, and I've got these, which I, I talked about previously. These are the Arbor 
uh, 50 cal Browning M2 machine guns uh, and they are metal and they are absolutely stunning these and the, the plastic parts in the kit as you can see they just cannot hold a candle to it there's no comparison you've got to get those there they are Arbor and it's product code A48017 that you need absolutely amazing and this is the <laughs> this is what they look like when they are when they are on so realistic that's the finished example there absolutely fabulous so that's one little bit of aftermarket you probably do need with this kit um, to be honest I think it's about the only one you need because I think everything else is fine <coughs> and then we've got some astonishing uh, weathering detail on the cowlings and around all the rivet screws access hatches and then we have finished product Miss Virginia famous aircraft that shot up and ultimately killed General that's, I keep saying General Admiral Yamamoto who is the, the chief of the uh, Japanese Imperial Navy and then we get on to the uh, there's another uh, an F version here Port Moresby uh, in Papua New Guinea 1942 Spencer Pollard's fabulous work here and Spencer has uh, has his own way of doing things and uh, a mighty impressive modeler if ever I saw one uh, I look at his work and just shake my head and think what well, should I even start because it's not going to look like that is it well we can try though the fun is in the building isn't it there's no point in competing or comparing yourself with other people it doesn't matter really uh, and he, he puts a very um, sort of British sort of look at the way that this has been done um, and he has his own way of sort of um, looking at particular issues and highlighting particular things uh, and he does do a rather, has to be said, rather superb job of it all talking about the masking, you get a masking set of course and uh, he's got this very <coughs> kind of a downbeat looking weathering he's done here um, but it's very very impressive especially when you see the, the walk areas there around the cockpit because so obviously it has these um, twin sort of sponsons, twin pylons with the engines mounted at the front of them and the cockpit canopy sits in the middle in like a, like a gondola really in the centre of the aircraft with the nose <coughs> very unusual plane but an incredibly high performance, a very spectacular aircraft I mean these made a big difference uh, they're, they're in the European theatre of operations as well of course now look at this, look at that photograph, that's a photo of the model now that looks like the real thing, I'm going to zoom in on. Remarkable photography that. Um, why can't I make my models look like this, you know? I do, I do a half decent picture, but it's not. It's, it doesn't have photogenic qualities like that. <laughs> no way. Um, Brett Green, oh, okay. Marcus Nichols. Now, hang on a minute, I may have, I may have maligned people here. I've just realised it's Chris Warchop that did the painting. Brett Green, but he's admitting it, now he's coming clean, look. Brett Green builds and Chris Warchop paints. <laughs> okay, he's come clean on this one. Masterfully paints, weathers and details the FG. And that's their own version of Miss Virginia. So we won't go over it again because it's a lot of, there's a lot of similar content in here, just taken by different people. And they were ultimately, I think, written uh, originally. I think several of these were uh, written and created for different magazines and then decided to put it in a book with some extra photography and extra detail uh, a bit more um, content shall we say but at least here Brett's come <laughs> complaining about it <coughs> now then as you can see uh, Brett is a master builder no question about that and uh, some of the detail here where he's uh, enhancing some of the like the radio gear. Look at that! Isn't that lovely? Show the front and rear shot of it with all the additional wiring, uh, which doesn't come in the kit, of course. <coughs> there he's doing that trick with the uh, the masking tape on the nose again, and then we've got all this wonderful weathering 
Uh, and I think he uses the hair, I think it's the hairspray technique, but I haven't had a chance to read the book really yet because it's only just arrived. But he does some beautiful chipping. And look at the, uh, look at the detail on this. See that? Um, again on the walk areas. The sort of high traffic areas, see it there as well. Remarkable stuff. End up with a beautiful result. And then you've got this um, postcards from the P38. <laughs> so here we've got some, uh, some light-hearted take of it, where they had these promotional postcards. Uh, <laughs> look at that. Making the tank drop tank look like a, a sort of a shark. And then they've got the actual postcards, some of, them, some of which were from Lockheed adverts. Um, really pushing their own product here. And of course the Allison engine, which was basically the Merlin, which was made under license. Do they actually say that? I'm just wondering what the wording is. Uh, they talk about the Allison as though it's their own. I'm pretty sure it's a modified Merlin, uh, for sure. It just doesn't look like the early Allison. And then you've got this um, performance controls the air. And uh, PESCO, what are they doing? Heavy duty fuel pumps. So this is actually using the lightning to advertise the company's fuel pumps that supply the fuel pumps. That's incredible. And then another lightning, very uh, gung-ho propaganda uh, postcard. And then this one is saying, give us more P38, so they're into fundraising. <coughs> so they're, they're explaining that they need to raise funds to, to get more lightning. So yes, that's very impressive. And then we get on to the H version, which is the one I've got here. Now look at this. Um, now this is this is interesting because this has got the pudgy, but I don't think this this version I've got doesn't come with the pudgy decals. So I think he's had to source them later. So this is Guadalcanal 1942. Again, there's some playing around going on because in this one he's using the Edward, um, which I did do a review of by the way separately. You can go see my review of the Edward gun bay. And here it is, and it's showing that you're going to have all the gun bay open on this one. It's going to have all the guns modified. Everything's going to be visible, and it's going to be some quite exquisite detail. And this is what it kind of comes out at. So you've got your 50 cals there. I don't think he's used the Arb ones. He's, he's modified, I think he's used the Edward ones for the guns. Yes, pretty sure it's the Edward set. <coughs> and then... Uh, again, moving through using the Edward PE set that's uh, part of their upgrade pack. Um, additional wiring, some copper wire going in there, which looks absolutely fabulous. I'm not sure about this though, whether. The, the, I don't sound critical because that, that's not what I'm trying to do, but look at, look at the, um, the gun feed, the bullet feeds. It looks nice from a distance, but actually up close, it, I don't know. It's not the painting or the work that's been done. I think it's the moulding from from Edward. It doesn't look that sharp or crisp to me. Uh, all the guns and the bits around it seem fine, but the actual ammo belt there, the actual ammo itself, looks a bit soft, doesn't it? Anyway, we are <coughs> splitting hairs here a bit. You've got to remember it's very small, so we have to be fair about it. Um, talking here about using resin wheels and uh, using the existing. <coughs> The resin tyres are obviously from Edward, um, so they really do look good, especially when you weather them up as he's done here. Zoom in again. See that? They do look nice, don't they? A little sand between the treads. Yeah, I mean, it's, and then, it, then you end up zooming out to the finished product, um, which is just absolutely stellar. I mean, that just looks phenomenal. And of course, the chap that flew this, which was, um, just find his name. Dum, 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 dum. Yeah, T Thomas B. Maguire, who was decora highly decorated. Uh, I think he got the Medal of Honor, but he was shot down and he actually died. He didn't make it through the war, sadly, um, which is unfortunate, you know. And then there's a special page about the P-38's Fable nose guns, talking just about the guns. Some wonderful close-ups. Really letting you see the belt feeds and uh, the uh, catch cans for all the uh, uh, 
they catch cans? Or they're just ejected? No, they're just ejected, aren't they, actually, out the bottom. I thought they had catch cans like some, some of these World War II players do, but they didn't on this P-38. It just ejects the spent shells out the bottom. But you can see how the, the ammo is fed in here, and all these guys are basically preparing the, uh, setting up the guns and making sure it's fully fully loaded. And then we've got the new model, which is the one here that, this is going to need a zoom because they haven't shown a very big picture. But this is the very latest version of the kit which came out this year, Oops. which is the, um, the J, uh, the later one. And again, um, we've got here a very, very nice shot. I think that's a Tamiyar shot in fairness. I think these are actually Tamiyar pictures that have been incorporated into the book because they're not weathered so they don't get away. Uh, and it, it details the differences like the yoke's different and uh, superchargers and the intakes are different a few differences on the instruments things like that canopy slightly different you can definitely tell that's a Tamiya shot look how pristine it looks <laughs> it hasn't, hasn't you know looks like it hasn't actually turned an engine propeller yet but very very nice and that's the latest version of the kit and then it goes into detail about all the accessories that are available uh, and there are many uh, from Edward, Yahoo, DEF and fine moles, uh, various PE sets, um, seatbelt sets etc etc very very nice indeed and then just a plug of their own some of their own stuff and then on the back we get uh, just one or two nice particularly nice photographs showing some of the lovely details that are contained within the kit. So, mm. it was a while coming this. I think they had to delay because of the release of the J version. It was a little bit later than planned and that's why it's coming out because they wanted to include all the latest versions so it's right up to date. A very, very nice book. Um, I, I, can't, you know, I can't recommend them highly enough. I use these for my they did one for the Spitfire, Brett Green did for the Spitfire 48th version even. And I certainly use it for the 32nd Spitfire Mark 9. It just shows you so many options and lets you plan your build a little bit better. Highly recommend it. That gets a 10 out of 10 from me, absolutely no question. I thought we'd have a quick nose at the kit. Um, I don't think we'll go and go for you because it's take too long and you've seen most of it before. But, um, just some of the things about this kit that really stand out, I think, were having another refresher look at. Like the details, I mean, this time they actually put a pilot in here, which is really nice. And he's, um, I say put a pilot in, they usually do, but this is, some of Tamiya's pilots are mm, not that great, to be honest. Whereas their figures on their armour kits are outstanding. But this time, they seem to have done it really well. I'm going to pop out these staples so you can see this properly. This of course is the limited edition, special edition from 2020, which came out uh, just after the Covid thing started. Uh, it was actually a, a plane with Markings restored aircraft, <coughs> which was a G, I think it was. Um, and it was going to go to an air show that was cancelled because of Covid unfortunately, so, so there we are. Now let's have a look, proper look. Now then, you can see what I mean here, if you look at his... Uh, the pilot's head and face. You can see there's a lot of pretty fine detail there, which we've not had on previous Tamiya kits. Some of their pilots are a bit, a bit effortless, you know, they haven't done a lot of work on them. A bit generic, a bit like Airfix do, but this one they seem to have made a lot more effort. And here's your uh, GH style yoke. And this is one of the sprues, I think it's got some differences on it. Um, and here is the underside, obviously, of the main uh, gondola, as I called it, the gondola section, which is the nose and cockpit in the middle. There's really some pretty crisp detail for Tamiya. So if you look at these instrument panels, whoops, look at these instrument panels. Two different options because it's so don't forget it's the uh, the G and the H version. Uh, yeah, you get some nice, nice crisp, sharp details which you don't get on some others. That's what you say. Any of those we should look at. Well, I did talk about the oops, sorry, some of my hands there. 
We can talk about the Arbor cannons, which I think I'll show you. They're quite groovy, it has to be said. Here they are. Get a bit of focus, that'd be nice, thank you. Yep, here we go. So this is your 50 cal cannon barrels. Now those are really, really nice. So nice, the camera can't focus, there we go. How's that? Set of two. Now you need to get two sets, unfortunately, because two isn't enough. <laughs> don't know why they put only two in and didn't do a pack of four, that's kind of strange. But because it's an outer and an inner, there's the inner barrel and the outer cooling, uh, the cooling jacket it has the holes in it. They are pretty special and you definitely need, you need two, two of those to make up your lightning. I talked about the, uh, the previous magazines and we have a couple of them here. I'm just going to zoom you right out for this. A couple of them that really are, well, I was going to say they're worth getting, but if you, go, if you buy the book I've just recommended, you kind of don't need these mags and hunting them down there is probably going to be a little bit tricky. Um, but if you do have them in, in your collection, dig them out. So it's, um, where is it? Uh, do little, tell me how do little are all the same, you know, in terms of the publication. Um, they've got number, is it number 89, looks like? 89? No, issue 289. 289. And that's November 2019 when the original version came out. And I think this is the one where, where <laughs> Brett does the... Uh, Brett does the building. No, it's Marcus Nichols in this case. Okay, this particular one. Um, maybe it's the other one where, where Brett does it. Um, and then uh, Chris Warchuk does the painting. Uh, there's no crime. Just, just, just tell us up front what you have in the book. It's absolutely fine. We don't mind. It's just that we every thought, God, God, this Brett Green is just unbelievable. Uh, and you can see that um, someone like Chris Warchuk is uh, almost an artist, really. You know, he goes beyond modelling, really, I think. Um, and then you've got this... Astonishing, uh, this is the Meng Air, which is an expensive magazine. What do they cost? They cost about six pounds, six, seven pounds per mag, and not very big. But this is number 88, Feb 2020, this one. Uh, and again, you've got this really beautiful, really beautiful example, uh, the Headhunter. P38 uh, Lightning. Um, and it's the, which one is that? Is that the, I think that's the G. And again, some astonishing weathering. Really, really outstanding. Beautiful work. Um, and he's, he's basically done a metal finish here. And he's saying these are very weary, worn areas. Um, chipping effect, AK's chipping effect is what he's used this time. I was able to simulate the high traffic areas around the cockpit. So obviously it's, it's got metallic AK, uh, metallic, and then it's got heavy chipping fluid, which is a product I've got, not tried, so I must give it a go to be honest. Whoops, that's worth a try, I think. And then you get some absolutely stunning photographs of the the finished aircraft model and with these very worn chipped areas on it very very good so <clears throat> as I say I don't think I'll go through and do a review of the whole kit because most of you have seen it already it's not new uh, there is this new um, J version out which has got one or two tiny changes because it's the late war version a beautiful kit though absolutely stellar um, it goes together like a dream everybody tells me um, there are clever things, obviously there's the, the weights uh, and also just the way that things fit. You know, there's so much thought goes into Tamiya's work uh, that makes it very, very special. I can certainly recommend it to you. Um, some people have said to me, oh, I don't really like the lightning, I can't identify with it. Uh, now I was the same, as a youngster I was the same. Um, and by the way, I think I've got some aftermarket day cards, which might be worth a quick look. Um, they might be worth it. Let's have a look at those. I think, I think the kit's well painted. Let's see. Here. Ooh. Uh, yeah, maybe a quick look because uh, don't want to get into any trouble. 
These are, okay, yeah, these are a little bit interesting. So it's Kit's World, uh, war set, mid-war set number four, and there's some quite interesting cartoonery here. So I won't dwell on that for too long, otherwise we're getting in a bit of trouble. Uh, but very nice, shows you exactly how the artwork goes on the nose and on the inside when you can't see it. Those are the day cars themselves, which again, extremely, um, yeah, extremely interesting art, very arty, whoops. Uh, nice stars and bars, um, but they are nice Kits World uh, day cars, I've got to say. They um, they go down quite well and they're not too thick. Um, I used them on, I think it was the Higher Call, the Franz Stiegler ME109, P109 G6. Um, they, were, they were really good, really good. So, uh, you know, I don't know why quickly before I get into any trouble with the sensor. <laughs> and anyway, there you go. So, I thought you'd like to see the book in particular because that is new, it's just come out. Uh, it got published in the UK, um, I think second week in October, first, second week in October. Uh, so it's about £20, I can't remember the exact figure, but about £20, definitely recommend it to you. Um, if you want to have the, it's going to show you the barcode, but it doesn't seem to have one strangely. Um, that is odd actually, it just says do little media 2022. No ISBN number, which, which is odd. So obviously there may be a bit of a limited run on that. 10 out of 10 from me. <clears throat> Excellent, really good supporting reference material. Just what you want. Hope you found this interesting. Please be back soon because I'll be talking about stashes and I'll be showing you how I manage my stash. Or mismanage it as my wife says. Uh, <laughs> And uh, we're going to talk about your stashes and you can all, especially in the live chat, I think you can be very interested to see how many kits people have got and what sort of kits they've got and what, they, what their favourites are and things like that. I think it's going to be quite interesting because it's the biggest challenge is we all love, you know, all modellers love kits. I'm going to build that, I'm going to get, oh that's cool. Like, you know, we've got the new Airfix Spitfire coming out in a few weeks. Uh, I'm not sure how many of us are actually going to build it. Quite a few, probably, but not. I doubt it's a quarter of those kits that I built. Um, I've got that on order too, so we'll have to have a look at that at some point. <clears throat> but we all buy them with the good intentions to build and very rarely ever do. Um, anyway, I know what you're thinking. You've, all of you are thinking, well, he hasn't mentioned about his new look. <laughs> and I've got my colour sergeant born from Zulu beard back. You be quiet, no comments at the back, you be quiet now, there's a good gentleman, you know who you are. Uh, yes, I'm just going for the, the winter look here, getting ready for the Zulu war. Uh, I thought I'd have a bit of a, I got quite a lot of amused comments last time, so I thought I'd join in and do it again. Uh, maybe I'll mow, mow it off for November or something, I don't know, but uh, yeah, I thought it would keep my face warm in the colder weather. Anyway. Looking forward to seeing you again soon. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for joining me. Please give us a 10 out of 10 by smashing that like button. And don't forget to ding the notification bell uh, if you have already subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed, well, why not? Why not? Get yourself subscribed and uh, then you'll be sure not to miss out on the next exciting video in the not-too-distant future. In the meantime, thanks very much for joining me. Please all look after yourselves. Thanks a lot and bye for now.